Hello everybody, CT Lux here with you for some Smash analysis. In this series, I take pivotal games and popular tournament sets and do a deep dive through them to break down the situations that lead to a player's win condition and victory. This is a new series, so by all means, please leave a comment below with some feedback on this video. We're looking for ways to continue to improve these as they're made, and we want to make sure that you enjoy them. The match that we're going to go into is actually Grand Finals Game 3 of Return to Yoshi's Island, a major tournament held on the East Coast. And Grand Finals is being played between Tweak, one of the best players in the world, uh, he's using Joker, and DeBuzz, also one of the best players in the world, using his tried and true Olimar. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out the original video on YouTube. It's on 2G Gaming's channel. The event was hosted by Aeon Gaming, so shout outs to both uh, both those organizations. Go ahead and give them the give them all the support that they deserve. But for now, let's go ahead and set the stage. So we've made it through Grand Finals. We have uh, Tweak. He's sitting on the winner side of Grand Finals. The Buzz sitting on the loser side of Grand Finals. Um, actually, DeBuzz went the long way going, going to making it to Grand Finals. He was actually upset earlier in the tournament by a player named Vinya using Greninja, but he was able to win the run back in Losers Finals uh, to make it back to Grands. Of course, Tweak looking as unstoppable as usual, making it to the winner's side. And, you know, one of the interesting things about this match is Tweak has been using Joker, which is one of the new trends that we're seeing in the metagame. Kind of interesting to see a lot of the top players starting to gravitate towards Joker as a pick. I think people get pretty nervous when they see a lot of top players picking a specific character and the ramifications that might have on the metagame. But when you want to win, you just got to play the best character. And that's Tweak using Joker. It's interesting because, you know, Tweak is known for using a lot of characters. Wario, he's famous for a Pokemon trainer as of late. So we'll see what... Uh, Tweak's Joker has to offer. So, setting the stage a little bit, you know, the uh, two players have traded game one and game two, so each of them sitting at one win apiece, going into game three of the best of five set, and away we go. At least that's what he told me. So, um, unless he just wants to not do that. But I, I don't really see a reason for the Rosa, and I don't see a reason for the Palu, honestly. All right, let's take a look at that opening really quick. This is actually one of the fun nuances. I think sometimes people tend to shut their, you know, close their minds, I think is the best way to put it, when they see an Olimar on screen. Uh, but there's always all these little intricacies that you get to pick up that, from Olimar players that are really fascinating. So I'm going to back that up from the start. And you're going to see the Pikmin toss from DeBuzz. He's going to immediately, and you see in this section right here, he only has a single yellow. What that ends up doing is, because of the hit stun properties on yellow Pikmin, it opens up a lot of early combos that normally aren't possible with other Pikmin, uh, you know, in the fold. So he gets rid of the red and blue. It also sets up for the, you know, the white and the purples on the next Pikmin toss to give him a better lineup. So we'll see if he's able to utilize that yellow Pikmin to get it, you know, the early Olimar percents. And I don't see a reason for the Paulu, honestly. Yeah, no, out of all of the characters, I feel like all right, and then we're going to see, uh, it's interesting, you know, DeBuzz is already floating around, not to DeBuzz, uh, Tweak is already floating around on top. And it's interesting because under most matchups and most characters, if you're above your opponent in this kind of manner, that's typically considered the disadvantage state of the match. But, you know, it's... Um, Joker is unique in that he's able to use gun to kind of throw off the neutral that most people are used to playing and the buzz it looks like he's going to try to utilize the platforms to kind of stay away from that situation because gun is going to be something that's going to allow tweak to not only camp but open up some opportunities to get in and do some damage on Olimar. so we'll see how that dynamic plays out throughout the match on paper, Palu would probably be the better option, but DeBuzz has such a fleshed out game plan for what he needs to do for fighting Joker because he's run into the characters multiple times when it comes to travel. Right, and... All right, and yeah, you know, see DeBuzz, it's interesting. He's, you know, in the situation, he's going to pick up a, a white Pikmin toss. Probably be the better option, but... The purple toss and then a white, and he's going to play it slow. And you're going to actually see him, he's going to, in these situations, you're going to see him throw out these preemptive uh, smash attacks for the wall. I'll point it out as it comes out. So, oh, smash right there. He was he was waiting for, you know, uh, 
tweak to try to do some sort of aerial option. He's going to throw out another up smash right here preemptively while Tweak is on the platform, just so that he can kind of put a little bit of doubt in Tweak's mind so he doesn't immediately platform drop for aerials. It's something that all, you know, it definitely cuts off a lot of approaches. Another forward smash right there too. The buzz is up at least like 2-0 or 3-0, I believe. I know he's the last one. And you know, actually, it's kind of interesting how this whole entire, you know, not to keep pausing, but it's interesting to see how this has played out. The buzz is actually doing a really good job whistling a lot of Joker's early percent shenanigans. However, because whistle operates on super armor, you can see the percent difference. There's not a whole lot. And so we're in this weird situation where it kind of looks like the buzz has been really controlling, you know, the uh, and dictating the pace of the match, at least from hit going hit for hit. However, the percents are not that different. So I'm wondering if he's got to think of a different way to approach this matchup because he's not really getting the desired, you know, the desired results that he wants by whistling everything. It's like two times they played, he's beaten them with all of them. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of like why switch it up kind of thing. Yeah. It could also not be a matchup thing that a player base plays. So. Yeah. It seems and here's a ledge guard situation coming out from Tweak. Olimar shenanigans, but the buzz in his own right is doing fine with being able to mix up how he's pressuring and like what he's deciding to do against Tweak. Because now we're seeing a bit more. All right, let's go ahead and pause. So interesting. You're gonna you're kind of seeing that in these situations that Tweak is trying to really slow down the match. Like if we kind of go back and look through that. Yeah. Tweak is just he keeps he's, he finds his opportunities and hits on an air, throws on an aerial. However, whenever he wants to play the neutral situation, he goes straight to the gun dynamic. So I think the buzz is going to really have to figure out a way to counterplay gun in order to take this match because it seems like Tweak is very determined to utilize that as his primary neutral option. Fine with being able to mix up how he's pressuring and like what he's deciding to do against me because now we're seeing a bit more of the good forward smash. But oh, now Arson's online, and just to pause that, and you know, for those of you at home, one of the key factors for the Joker matchup, of course, to watch for is that Arson gauge. It's you know, it's very important as soon as that's full. Joker becomes a lot scarier in most situations. There's some you know, different. There might be some situations where you want Joker without Arson, like if you're off stage and trying to recover from below so you don't get too framed. But outside of that, you know, from a punishment standpoint, it's definitely the harder hitting part of Joker that you'll see. So it'll be interesting to see, as I mentioned, that Tweak was trying to slow play it so far. Let's see if he decides to kick it up a notch now that he has Arson online or if he's going to continue to play that slow game. Now that Tweak has a good idea of how he can play the long range here. There's the gun. Oh man, calmly right into the forward air, leading into an offstage situation. The fly. Oh, and the up smash connects, but Town and City with those gracious ceilings. It's like at least a like up smash had a shield. We've got them. Whoa. There. Wow. All right, let's back. So it's hard to tell if uh, to, you know if if uh, Tweak really decided to uh, decide to slow play it because he's playing right here and he caught. The buzz trying to be overly aggressive in this situation right here. The down tilt, usually an Olimar is going to try to follow up that down tilt with an aerial attack. Especially if he knows he's going to get it. I think, you know, kind of caught the buzz off guard. I don't know if he thought he was going to get it. And the buzz kind of autopilot maybe. He's thinking, oh, I'm just going to be able to punish, you know, uh, tweak no problem. But he's going to get hit into a gun. And as soon as gun hits, that's... Seems to be Tweak's opportunity to really get get things going in the matchup. An old man coming. And then as soon as he's starting to play advantage, you know, he's definitely playing aggressive, but it is an advantage situation. Good up smash. And he's going to get one more up smash, right? You know. Yeah, the buzz didn't really force him, I kind of feel like, to make any hard plays. Kind of, it looked like he was just maybe not panicking, but trying to exert his will. A little bit too hard when Arson was on, on online. It might have been better off for him to play a little more passively, but it's hard to tell. You know, obviously he's the professional, and I'm just uh, giving some insight into what I think. But clearly, it didn't work out so well because he lost his stock pretty quickly. Speaking of which, <laughs> up smash out of shield guy. Yeah, and I mean both these characters with great up smash out of shield. And huh, I wonder if he um. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. 
Yeah, and I mean, so he didn't even wait on the platform. You know, he could have waited till the meter was out. I wonder. You know, it's one of those weird plays. I think, uh, and we'll see if that happens on the other Halo platform situations. Um, he went through to pluck his Pikmin instead of waiting on the Halo platform for the uh, Arsene meter to build. One of those interesting dynamics. A unique situation where Olimar is one of those rare characters. Is probably the only character really that is not able to utilize his full invincibility because he has to go through and uh, Pikmin pluck every time. Characters with great up smash auto shields. Uh, obviously for Tweak, it's going to be more in the situation when the Buzz does a rising arrow onto a shield. That's when he can kind of snatch up all Okay, that'll be interesting to see. So, the Buzz gets the hit, but he has a Pikmin latched on. And you can see Tweak is actually using this Pikmin latch to build up his, uh, his meter. And that might be problematic in the matchup. It kind of makes me understand now why DeBuzz has not been going to Pikmin Toss as an option. Uh, well, mostly because Tweak has been playing from above with Aerial Gun downwards, but Pikmin Toss, he can't, you know, DeBuzz is not really going to be able to just use that whenever he wants, I think, just because that meter charging is always going to be a factor. The only thing that he'd be able to do is really a purple Pikmin Toss, which doesn't have the latching factor. Uh, the interesting trade off, though, is that, you know, he ends up underneath the stage in a disadvantaged position. And under most characters, this would not be a very good situation, but Joker's recovery is pretty good. Coming from like directly below, it's really hard to punish. And Olimar's not necessarily the best character in the game of capitalizing on someone in this area. So it seems like a good trade for Tweak overall, even if he's gonna have to battle off the ledge in the disadvantaged situation. Olimar. Oh, again, there's the Rebel Guard gonna get a tad bit of meter there. It definitely wasn't a white. Yeah, meter. and it looks like, you know, that's another situation where if we're looking at it, the Buzz is really struggling to handle this downward gun. And every time a downward gun comes out, it seems like that's Tweak's ticket to get in. By anything else, like, look at that. We almost have Arsene back on stage. This is where things can get very nasty. Because if Tweak gets one more Arsene. And Tweak's doing a good job managing this match. That's so much damage for our first stock. Why another thing that just in general I think with Joker, Arsene is a comeback mechanic, but I also feel like All right. a snowball mechanic. So like, Tweakens or uh the buzz ends up getting the first stock on the on the blue Pikmin toss. It's his only Pikmin, so you know that he's farming for it at that point for the throw. But I I think Tweak, you know, he can't really complain about how that stock went and he has a you know, an eighty eight percent now lead with that hit. But a really good first stock for Tweak. DeBuzz is going to really have his work cutting, you know, cut out for him to work around downward gun to try to battle back into the match. Like it's really, really strong. And in this matchup in particular, I feel like there's so many ways for for Tweak to be able to leverage the Rebels' guard, and it's just naturally part of DeBuzz's game plan. So it's not like he can even stop. Okay, him. that's good on DeBuzz's part. Some little adaptations. So you see right there, he goes back to using the platform. So we'll go back. Hold on. Let's let me get back in here. He tries using the platform and as he punishes the aggression, it's one of those signal queuing. So let me backtrack. So he tries to punish. Here it is. He tries to punish the gun right there and he misses. But if you're to buzz, you know that Tweak has been going in like almost automatically as soon as he gets that aerial gun hit. So the buzz is not really getting the full, you know, the full force of the gun guns because of the platform. So he's able to make some sort of counterattack. So you see him expecting Tweak to come in, hit him, you know, punish him for being overly aggressive and overcommitting with the up smash right there. You can't really ask any Pikmin player to stop using their main tool. Yeah, I <laughs> Yeah, and that one right there, you know, gun put that's one of the things that's also going to be problematic. You saw the buzz trying to adapt instead of going after gun in the air. He tries to play it patient and stay home. And the hard part is it, you know, it forces it forces uh, him to play a rock, paper, scissors in this scenario with tweak. And unfortunately, in this situation, the buzz chooses wrong by trying to aerial punish it and he gets hit for it. Yeah, I, that definitely would not be smart. No, it's like. <laughs> I don't even think Olimar could do like a Solomar in this game. So yeah, Tweak has a lot of control in this match. It's looking really bad for DeBuzz overall. Forward throw and Tweak just slowly ledge trapping DeBuzz into his dude. And you can see him going underneath the stage recovering. <laughs> just trying to do everything he can. Again, getting grabbed, getting thrown off. 
trying to chase him with the guns, but when there's only one or no Pikmin, the wing Pikmin are fast enough to avoid gunfire. Uh -huh. All right, that's interesting. All right, let's look at that. So the buzz has been a disadvantage for a really long time, and that's always a terrible feeling as a player, especially when you're this far behind. And it kind of, you know, when you're in disadvantage that long, you kind of get in your own head. And in this situation, the buzz, all he's got to do is grab and get through it. Um, I, you know, he doesn't grab because I'm sure he's afraid of getting a spot dodge cancel option coming out from Tweak or maybe, you know, a... Uh, an aerial jumping out of shield. I don't know, but something, you know, it kind of sometimes the most obvious option is the one to, to go for. But instead, he goes for something a little different. He goes for a neutral air. And that, you know, the neutral air means that he was scouting out a jump out of shield for aura or a spot dodge from, you know, from Joker. So I think neutral air might have covered both those options. So, you know, not a bad idea overall. Tweak. Interestingly enough, goes for the grab because I think he sees the buzz's percentage and figures, yeah, I'm gonna kill Alomar for sure. Unfortunately for Tweak, it doesn't kill. So in this situation, I wonder if Up Smash probably would have killed, but Tweak probably went for the grab because it was safer and he was probably sure it was, you know, it was gonna kill. Sometimes, you know, even at the top level players make misjudgments on kill percents and um, you know, hopefully that doesn't allow DeBuzz to get back into the game for Tweak, you know, but fortunate for DeBuzz to survive. And he's going under the stage again, back in disadvantage. Our sand meter is getting quite healthy. Uh, another empty land and back to, oh my god, Joker, Joker's throws are terrible. So that's, you know, if you're playing that matchup in any of your tournament sets, you should make sure to go ahead and... Shield camp him. Next back row? Question mark? <laughs> Good down air to cover that area, so. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a grab, man. Uh, not enough to kill it. What? <laughs> Sorry, uh, you know, I, I know what's happening even because I took notes on it, but even then it still surprised me. Like, especially that down throw. I'm surprised it didn't kill. So, you know. And one of the situations that, you know, from a tactical standpoint is interesting. Arson is now you know, online, so the buzz now has a situation in mind. He's done really well to force Arson to come out because that'll have, you know, ramifications on his next stocks uh, if he's able to minimize the amount of times Arson comes out for Tweak. It's, you know, all the better for him. I'm not sure if it's better for Tweak to, or not Tweak, uh, for the buzz to try to slow play, slow play the situation and burn as much meter as he can or if he's should fast play it because if he loses the stock, then he can wait on the Halo platform to burn some of the meter over time. You know, there are the risk rewards for both of them. So we'll see what the buzz decides to do in terms of, you know, uh, how he wants to play this strategically. If I have to guess, the buzz is a more of a slow, slow player, methodical player. He might opt for the latter or the former of slow play rather than the latter of quick playing it. Oh, that, that the buzz DI though, is he going to get shot up? Gonna go to the right side. Yes, we are. Okay, see. All right, please. Oh, <laughs> it ended up not mattering. He got, <laughs> he went into the stage and got grabbed, so that ended up not being a factor at all. But, you know, and he's immediately, yeah, and he didn't wait on the platform at all either. He immediately went for the Pikmin putt. It could be that Tweak is floating around over there, and the buzz seeing that it's like, oh, there's no way he's gonna be able to punish me, so I might as well get my Pikmin pucks in. Maybe do a little bit of farming while he tries to recover from hopping around. <laughs> at 205, I really hope. At this time, like, the buzz, instead of dying, he just took his time to, like, wipe his hands. Ooh, that's a nice little, really hope. little intricacy. So, he, he Pikmin tosses to a red. And now he's going to have purple next in line. He's going to throw the purple onto his shield, which causes just enough shield stun for the buzz to be able to get an aerial attack out. Really quick, right there. We'll do it one more time. At this time, like the buzz, instead of dying, he just took his time to like wipe his. So good aggressive play from the buzz. You know, kind of mixing it up just a little bit. I'm <laughs> sitting on last stock. And... This transformation is so good for down gun camping. Like, so we can still stay in a range. Oh man, the match is ground to a halt. <laughs> Or like, am I gonna falling aerial, or am I gonna double? It kind of reminds me of that. There's this chess concept called Zugzwang, where 
it's an end game te- or end game situation where whoever makes whoever's forced to make a move is the one in, you know in disadvantage because both of them are playing it pretty neutral, pretty even, and not committing to anything. Because like I feel like they kind of know that if they try to approach not on their own terms, they're going to be at a disadvantage situation. So both players being stubborn and kind of grinding the match to a halt. Double jump down gun drift back onto one of these platforms. It's so, so good. Yeah, this is one of those instances where, like, even though your opponent might have a ton of cover for avoiding the down guns, you're still denying them a ton of space. Yeah. And it's also high enough where if they try Yeah, to- they're both being really stubborn on it. But it's actually really amazing to see that tweak in this situation. He's going toe to toe from a camping standpoint and almost outplaying to, you know, he's really out outplaying to Buzz's camping. The uh, only thing that really factor into this situation is that while from a damage standpoint, Tweak is doing a really good job of racking up damage and going toe-to-toe with Campion, the Buzz has been sneakily farming for Pikmin, and he now has two purples and a white, so it could be a little scary if he gets triple Pikmin online. That's a lot of damage that can be racked up pretty quickly. Something I'm actually really impressed with the tool he's using of all of them, like how well he's able to space AI. Yeah, you see how I get rid of the white per- white Pikmin right there immediately too. Oh no, he threw the oh no, he threw the Pikmin away on accidentally, uh, and Hangman heard it too or saw it too. Glad I'm not the only one. That macro game looking weak. Oh, yo, come on, man. <laughs> Everyone knows about StarCraft. <laughs> they're, they're comparing it to StarCraft with the macro game or a uh, micro game. <laughs> they're gonna talk about the buzz, you know comparing it to starcraft and so we saw tweak lose the stock and i think it's because you know you see tweak getting a little more aggressive and i think a lot of it is because he sees that the double purple is online he doesn't want to have to deal with triple purple um unfortunately he does not pick the correct spot to approach and he gets punished for it everyone knows about starcraft jokes now (laughs) yeah it's a really bad dash attack right there he said this. The buzz said that playing Almar is like playing StarCraft. And I just heavily have to disagree with that because I've played StarCraft. Wow, big 40 damage and the buzz is kind of, you know, it's not looking like a hot argument right now. <laughs> that's a big up. That's a big up here because it puts the buzz in the kill percent, I think, for some arson plays and you can see the meter building for for tweak. But that that purple, you know, string that he got the forward air, the big hits. You know, he has double purple. He's not out of this by any stretch of the imagination if he can hold on to those. Yeah, you know, pro StarCraft players have 300 average APM, but, you know, I doubt all, I don't, I don't know about all Mar players having 300 APM, bro. Huh. I wonder if that was a tech air right there. I'm not sure why DeBuzz is going to get rid of double purple in this situation. You see, he's going to Pikmin toss it that way, and then he throws this one back on stage. I assume he, he's throwing it because he's afraid of the edge guard, and all Mar's recovery is difficult when he has two purples, you know, uh, trying to get back to the stage. His recovery is determined by the weight of the Pikmin that he's holding, and purples being the heaviest is problematic. So that might be it, but it just kind of seems like a strange option because he works so hard to farm those Pikmin while... and then only to throw it away at this point in time. 300 APM, bro. <laughs> and uh, actually, you see, the Tweak even sees it too, and he kills that purple immediately, so now Tweak, or uh, the buzz has no Pikmin whatsoever. I mean, right now he's done a pretty good job of bringing it back. It's last stock, but he's got to get through this Arsene. No purples online, though. That's a really big deal. Tweak taking his time on this platform. Hey, the white is attached here. Oh, the white effect off. is especially... Yeah, he's just got to scramble and try to survive this Arsene. He's in danger of losing his stocks. He's going to go under the stage because that does burn a lot, you know, burn some meter time, and he's rolling, <laughs> and he's running away. Arsene, the dash attack. The smash comes in. This Arsene is gone. All right, and wow, look at this stock count now, you know, with the uh, with the meter burning and he's at last hit, last stock for both, you know, both the mini has a purple online. So despite looking like the buzz has been on the ropes, he's been quietly bringing this back, you know, to a very manageable game on his part. Ooh. Wow, the buzz bringing this right back. The guns and the double. And now he has double purple and a blue online too. Wow. That was scary. All right. So that's an interesting situation. I wonder if he knew that, you know, that attack was going to be, you know, with the late hit on it, 
if he knew it was going to be safe on shield, so he was going to avoid the purple. This is super close to kill, and you can see the purple's up smash is just frames from coming out, and that shield is definitely not up, so... Um, but he does get a grab on it, and is able to put the buzz into disadvantage even more so. See if uh, if we can tie up these kills at higher percentages. The buzz is getting enough mileage to go to nearly. Two. Oh my God! The buzz got really, or tweet got really lucky in that situation. So the buzz is gonna spam whistle to get back onto the stage from the disadvantage. And all right, so he has two purples and a blue from Pikmin, and he's gonna spam whistle. So in this situation, <laughs> Tweak is kind of playing Olimar roulette and. He's going to, you know, hope he doesn't get hit by purple. He's got a two out of three chance of losing his stock to an up air randomly in this situation, I think. But it ends up being a blue that hits, so it's not enough to kill off the top. Starting to be a bad look for Tweak as we're starting to look at tight. So yeah, now it's super tight and it's super close, and a blue is going to be super scary. And the buzz is, you know, done a really good job. Wow, that back air. Oh my god, I can't believe it killed. He might have jumped, I think. That was with really good DI too, but he just like sort of lifted. And that... Yeah, let's go back and look at what led, all, led up to all that situation. So he's going back to the gun, you know? Because that had been working. But he ends up getting a purple Pikmin toss. This is the kill squad. Yes, the super kill squad. Like you have all the threat of purple, but of course if you grab with... Wow. And I think DeBuzz threw out a preemptive up smash. You know, like they're at that stalemate where DeBuzz could not chase Tweak in the air for the risk of getting hit. And on the flip side, you know, he couldn't go on the ground because blue, per uh, blue Pikmin grab or purple Pikmin toss was stuffing out the approach. So Tweak went the only way that he could go in, which was from the air without aerial gun. And he landed a, he lands a back air, but you see, the buzz has already dropped his shield before the back air comes out, so it came out into a split second 50 50. And unfortunately for the buzz, unfortunately for Tweak, he ended up on the uh, you know on the winning you know Tweak ended up on the winning side taking the, the taking the match with it. So that's the end of the match. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Kind of a long video, really dense match. I think I even abandoned some of the notes that I took just because of how long the video is taking. But you know, overall, these are two really good players. In the aftermath, Tweak would go on to take game four after this, to end up winning the tournament overall. So, you know, shout outs to Tweak for a good match. But shout outs for DeBuzz. It looked like a very dire situation, and he had a tough time dealing with that aerial, you know, downward gun. So, something to look for in that matchup. It's, I think I saw, uh, you know, DeBuzz posting on Twitter about it. So, you know, let's see what he goes to the lab with to cover it and, you know, uh, what adaptations we'll have in store and let's see if Tweet continues to use uh, Joker as he moves on, you know, moves further in his smash career and tries to unseat MK Leo as the number one player in the world. So if you like the analysis, go ahead and give me a follow at Chase the Lux and we'll see you next time with another match to look at.